So you're drinking from the excrement. Your choice. <laughs> I'd rather sit down to an apple. That turns me on. <laughs> so Vishuddha purifies, you know, these lower chakras here. Anahata is the heart center, okay, that enables me to bond with others through emotions and sensuality, okay? And as the philosopher says, you know, it's a thin line between love and hate. That's when your bonding is emotional. It has to be, your bonding with others must come from the Hindu level. They come a lot up here, right? So it's coming from the prefrontal lobe and not from the so-called, you know, uh, mythological heart. The herit is the faculty that enables, it's the dwelling place, that's where you dwell when you are awake. And if it's not fully developed, you're not fully awake in the world. Most people are not fully awake in the world. You see that, okay? And when you're not fully awake in the world, the world beats up on you. You cannot conquer, you cannot master the earth. You see that? Okay? And as a result, you want to kill yourself. Your life is too hard. You want to run away from the earth. You were sent here to be the master of the earth. You were sent here to manifest your power of mind over matter. But you need to awaken all of these 14 chakras to achieve it. It's just not you, you know, uh, so-called like attracting like or focusing on what you want and you're going to get it. It's not that simple. Okay? Just inspect the lives of the people who sold you that book about, you know, all you got to do is just simply, you know, keep it up in your mind and you get it. Because look at them, they ain't got it. <laughs> no, I'm serious, serious, right? Okay. So we have the Manipura, which is the solar plexus, which is the fire center. It corresponds to the Taoist Tantian, the Hara. Okay, that's the fire when that chakra is strongly mani or jewels. So Manipura means Pura, a city of jewels, meaning that when that chakra is fully awakened, you have the fire to go out there and you know wheel and deal and you know be the the, the entrepreneur and make things happen, but that fire, you know, is not a moral fire. So if you don't have other things happening, you'll trample on others and even trample on your own life to get what you want. You with me? Okay? Uh, then underneath that comes the Swadhisthana, which is your sexual pleasure or the pleasure principle within you. Okay? That's one of the dominant chakras in the world today. And underneath it now is the Muladhara, which are your, the instincts that do not level, do not rise to the level of cognition. You have these subconscious precognitive things driving you, like you want to mate. You go, Why you want to mate? Everybody does. <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, survival. You don't have to have a philosophy to protect yourself, to protect your life. That's, you have an instinct to stay alive, you know? and so on. Somebody attacks your child, you jump in there, to, it's an instinctive thing, right? And some instincts are good, some are bad. Why? Because all your instincts are animal endowments, and some of them don't, don't fit into the human or the spiritual life, and you at some point have to learn to fix that. But fixing it is just not an academic, intellectual thing. You have to go into the spirit the chakras are the vehicles of the spirit. You see that? So, so the shamanic tradition of 14 chakras, okay, is the original system. The system that we are now learning is the uh, Vedantic and the Jainist of seven chakras. Okay, so you think that that's what it is? No, that is what they're teaching you. So we have nine spiritual faculties, Sahasra, Guru, Visarga, Nirvana, Nirvana, Indu, Manas, Ajna, Talu, Harit. Okay, five psychic, Vishuddha, Anahata, Manipura, Svaitana, Mulahara. 
Now, the powers to achieve your things in the world are those four lower chakras. Anahata, Manipura, Suritana, Mulahara. You see that? Okay? Those are the elemental chakras. And before you work with those chakras, you have to first, you know, awaken and, be, and work with these nine spiritual faculties. Okay? Guru was left out. Vizarga, Nirvana, Indu, Manas, Talu, and Hirit <coughs> were left out of the popular notion of the seven chakras. So what was left out is this, the, the spiritual work. So you get into, if you, fortunately, most of what they teach you on the other side is ineffective. Trying to tell, thank God. Because if, if they were able to, to teach you effectively right, you would be a mess, you would be in trouble. Okay? Now the Buddhists went even further and reduced the 14 chakras to five chakras. You see that? And the, the reason is why. The reason is that you know, if you study a book of numerology, you will know that you know, uh, the way things are organized you know, in nature, some things follow a code of nine, other things follow a code of four, or five, or three, or seven, you know? So the seven chakras you know, followed a septenary arrangement that people were following, and then they made everything fit into it. And they left out what didn't fit in. Just leave it out. The Buddhists follow, you know, the five elements of Taoism. So they just simply threw everything out, okay, to use the five elements, the five, you know, um, uh, Dhyana Buddhas, and so forth, okay? But what the, the, the Dantins did was to... Um, they totally, okay, didn't understand that the Ajna and the Herit are the vehicles of consciousness and will. So if you don't work on Ajna and Herit, the mantra Om for Ajna, the mantra Herin for the Herit Chakra, you know, you as a divine being have no dwelling place within your being and in the world. You see that? You cannot establish yourself. You're like a, you, you, you're an entity without a dwelling place. You got to establish your foundation. That's what Ajna and Herit does. Okay? Then you have to establish your relationship with God to get guidance. Okay? Otherwise, your, your, your guidance is, is what? Coming from your own studies, your own education, and the education of others. Okay? So you're subject to opinions and speculations, okay? It's good to get somebody like, for example, the best that I can do is to say to you, follow this system, chant the mantra hum, that's the guru, chakra. And the mantra hum, you will eventually, after 21 days or so, okay, all right? Or if you learn Taoism on your auspicious days for doing spiritual work, <laughs> because there's a good days and bad days to meditate. That has not come into Western knowledge yet. Okay, so it's just within 21 days. Why 21 days? Because within 21 days of the lunar cycle, you'll hit and miss the right days. Okay. But the mantra whom? Chant the mantra whom? I meditate for an hour, breathing the right way. Okay? In what way, says the shraman? Says you take an in-breath, let's say four seconds, hold the breath for, let's say, eight seconds while you're chanting hum, and then breathe out for six seconds, or collapse that time if that's too much for you. Expand it as your capacity to hold the breath increases. And then you will find heating up taking place, that's the Kundalini now heating up within you and awakening the psychic function and then that home, that Guru Chakra, you begin to intuit truths. You see that? You begin to understand the things in your life from a divine perspective, from a divine legal perspective. There is such a thing as being guided by God. 
what kind of God will put man on earth and leave him to the vagaries of his intellect? <laughs> Did you read Crime and Punishment? Wasn't the protagonist in Crime and Punishment a very smart man? And as smart was his undoing? How about yours? Do you know anybody who's smart for their own good? I think everybody. Divine laws, the Dharma. Why laws? Because the part of you that executes your wishes, your intentions, the part of you that's responsible for your health, your wealth, your social life, you see, is an energy system. And all energy systems are governed by laws and rules. Electricity, magnetism, heat, you know, they're all governed by laws. Subject and reducible to mathematical and geometrical, you know, understanding because they are exact, quantifiable, you know, realities. And the laws that govern your life the same way because, you see, the execution part of you is based on laws. So if you want to do as you want, you will run into problems. The laws are not commandments. They don't turn commandments, they're laws. Laws are, the laws that govern your spirit and your life are laws of nature. Honor your father and mother is not a law, that's a commandment. What if your father is a rapist, a serial killer? Should you honor him? Absolutely not. When you disobey the law of gravity, you fall and break something. So it's not, you know? So live by divine law. Learn them and live by divine law. I teach that to you in my book here. Unity of all, the spirit of growth evolution, nirvana. Unity of all developed powers, sahasra, mind, manas, spirit of metabolism, bizarga, kundalini fire, balancer, the talu. You see that? Your ability to meditate, okay, comes from strengthening the herit and the ajna chakra. You see that? And each chakra has its own ritual system, okay? <clears throat> and I detail them in the book so that you will know how to do this. The book is just not simply what is, it's a how-to book. Okay, you go, you make much faster progress if you enroll in a class that we teach in Atlanta, but any one of you who is can rough it by yourself, feel free to